Hey, uh, Dak, you ever heard of Joe Boo? James. I know who it is, man. You know who it is. I don't know how God was. Boom. I'm doing great, man. Congratulations on the baby, man. Okay, it's a beautiful you. thing. I have a baby going to Dak, look up at me. Look up at me. Dak, there's your buddy. Hey. <laughs> Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, I'm no longer in Oxnard. We are actually in L.A. We'll be flying out on Monday to get back to life, back to reality, uh, having been here at training camp since last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday we flew in. Wow. We're talking about a week going by really, really fast. But it has been great to be here. I've seen a lot of great things. Tomorrow <clears throat> is the very first playoff game. Excuse me. Preseason game. Boy, I'm just like messing up big time here. First preseason game. And we have a lot of young guys, especially Trey Lance, that really and truly need to start shining. Um, we have, of course, the Cowboys making some moves, beginning to bring in some players, and they will be bringing in others. Uh, of course, they're going to be looking the waiver wire, the bargain basement bin, turning over every rock that they can to find players at a discounted rate. Um, as a Cowboy fan, it's kind of funny to me. I got an email last night from one of the fans that was, he was pissed. He was like, listen, you know, these players... You know, C.D. Lamb is going to be paid $17 million this year. And, you know, he's like, that's more money than 99% of people will make in the world in a lifetime, which is very true. And he should just shut up and be satisfied that he's got that and, and be out there playing. And he's just literally lambasting the players and saying that they make too much money. Well, my, my response to that is, is Google... Alex Smith's leg. Google Alex Smith's leg. Because when you see how twisted and messed up that leg is from one play on the field, because every one of those guys are literally one play away from the end of their career and physical damage that could end up being permanent. But the reality of it is, is you get paid for what you produce. The NFL makes money because of those guys. If you don't have CD Lamb, if the Cow, let's put it this way, you could go through and say, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to have just veteran minimum guys. You know, it doesn't matter who we have for quarterback, it doesn't matter who we have for receivers. We're just going to go out here and put a team on the field that we can say is a team. They're not going to put fans in the stands. Like, let's say it's a scab team from the 80s. Let's put a scab team on the field for the Cowboys and look and see how many people want to watch. Let's see if the NFL wants to put those games on TV. They don't. The reason why the Cowboys are as valuable as they are are people come to see those players or deal with that drama. Either one, they're the driver of the business. And you can't equate what they do versus us. Because when you think about it, if you are a lawyer and you're the top 1% lawyer, you make a whole lot more than the ones that aren't real good. If you're the top 1% of the doctors in the world, you make a lot more than the ones that are just average. And we're talking about the 1,000th of 1% of players and their occupation and so you can't necessarily equate that one with the other but i i get it i understand that we look at it and we say the players are being greedy but the players have a short window a finite time that they can make money jerry jones has been there for what since 88 owning the team raking in billions without having to risk anything other than money so I, I, feel, <clears throat> I feel your pain. I, I really actually feel, I, I'm literally on the fence right now because I'm sitting here 
thinking about <clears throat> coming out here, supporting the team, and, you know, like everything's hunky-dory, when we're sitting here having really done nothing of consequence to improve the team, and literally Jerry Jones blaming his shortcomings on the guys that are out there that are actually producing through adversity. So that's where I'm kind of like, it's good that we're getting a backlash because maybe at some point the Joneses will listen, but I'm not sure that's going to be the case. So tomorrow, <clears throat> tomorrow we have a lot of young guys that are going to be on the field. In fact, it's going to be pretty much all of the young guys and guys that will be roster bubble guys. Somebody who really and truly needs to have a great game is Trey Lance because right now, um, contrary to what people were hoping or thinking and so on, my observations out there, me watching, is Dak is on fire. The biggest worry right now is he's got soreness in his ankle yeah, from practice um, against the Rams. That's the biggest worry I have about Dak Prescott. He is looking like an assassin out there. He is hitting guys unbelievable passes left and right. And, you know, the thing you also have to look at, because people will go through and point out one play here, or one play there. You don't know, A, who's out there running routes or who's blocking or what they're trying to do. Sometimes you go ahead and put in different wrinkles and things to try and get people uncomfortable to try things to see what are things to keep, what are things not to keep. But <laughs> overall... He's looked really, really good, incredibly good. We have a lot of young wide receivers that, um, that somebody pointed out to me, and I said, uh, you know, I said, as long as Dak is upright, we're going to score points. And they said, yeah, well, you thought that, of course, before we had Amari Cooper. I will say two things are different right now than that situation. One, Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than he was before we got Amari Cooper that season where we were 3-5 and five and ended up winning the division. Two, I will say that he's actually gotten quite a bit of work. Um, as much as we look at two years ago where we had um, a very, 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 very young group with Noah Browns and um, Dennis Houston's and Michael Gallup on one leg um, and basically CeeDee Lamb going the second year. Um, CeeDee Lamb, let's be clear here, whether he gets his deal done or not, he will be there for week one. You, there's too much money to be left on the table to not be there. Um, I think Jerry Jones and the whole situation of, you know, I'm in no hurry. Well, I don't believe you're the one that's actually there doing that contract. I actually believe it's others that are taking care of that, namely Stephen Jones, because that's the player president, you know, and contract and all that. Him and his buddy from Marketplace Grill. Um, he'll be there, maybe not happy, but he'll be there. And if he is there, he's going to be out there like everybody else to have as great a season as possible because he's going to be looking for that payday. And that's the bottom line. So they may not be happy, although Dak seems to be completely 100% cool with where he is. Um, we're going to be looking, of course, I want to see Mozzie Smith in real game action um, and see if I – from what I've been watching in practice, um, if that's going to translate to him being a better player on the field. He has been so much, much maligned that um, it's crazy the amount of hate that he's gotten. But from what I've seen, he's put in the work. And if he is better than Hankins was last year, we're going to be in a great shape. We're going to be in incredible shape. Um, I look forward to seeing these young wide receivers. Um, Clapper has shown up really, really well. And definitely, it's going to be hard to figure out who they're going to keep as far as wide receivers. There's so many guys that have been playing so well. Um, and, and in some regards, C.D. Lamb not being there has given opportunities to others. But, of course, the elephant in the room still is C.D. Lamb's contract. And I have been out of the loop. I've not been listening to the talking heads. So I want to get a feel for what they're talking about with get up and the crew and things and uh how much uh bull jiggity we get let's listen in the blessing.
blessing it is to have a job that you like this much. You know? it, it, it is. It, we thank you all for getting up with us every single day. We are steamrolling into football season. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get Dominique Foxworth's power back on. In the meantime, Tannenbaum, Graziano, Greeny, ready to roll here with all your football Friday, including the Cowboys. He asked about a timeline. Listen to this. Jerry, Are you saying there's a sense curtain. of urgency as you begin the preseason to get CD down, done? No. No? How why you say that? I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, I went to high school or I went to college. I don't know why I said it, but I'm just saying I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't have a sense of urgency about getting it done. <laughs> So I don't understand why he's laughing at that. So anyway, the Athletics' John Machota then tweeted that, saying, I don't have an urgency to get it done. And moments later, C.D. Lamb quote tweeted it with the letters LOL. This was a quote tweet. He quote tweeted the tweet saying LOL. And it's worth mentioning, Micah Parsons retweeted C.D. Lamb's LOL. So this is the 2024 version of like all out warfare, right? Like we have social media beef amongst the Cowboys. Now mm -hmm. you talk to the people down there, Danny, I count on you. I mean, Jerry's laughing about not having urgency for a guy who is his entire offense. I mean, let's be as clear as we can be. C.D. Lamb is that offense. So how, how should we be reacting to this? Well, we often say on this show, what is Jerry always doing? He's negotiating, right? right. He's not going to say, oh, yeah, we're desperate to get this done. That's going to hurt his negotiating stance. So he says no. And then they ask him why he said that. And he's like, I don't know. I got that. That's what I'm supposed to say in this situation. <laughs> and then CD quote tweets it and basically saying, I'm not buying that. Like, I don't, you're not going to scare me. So this is just so negotiating going I think on. That's how I see it. Yeah, with Jerry, that's how I, I think he's always doing that. Uh, so look, they've had conversations. They've gone back and forth. I, I still don't, I don't see a situation. Take the other side of that. When I sat in that seat and I was negotiating, I was very conscious of what my actions and words were gonna resonate in the locker room. And if I'm a Dallas Cowboy, not named C.D. Lamb, I'm thinking like, if he's saying that about C.D. Lamb, what's he thinking about me? That can really hurt morale. And I know that was not the intended consequence, but Jerry Jones should take a half a step back. You have a lot of good <laughs> you young think? players. They want to know when they're going to get taken care of. And if you're making fun of your best player, what do you think about me? It's another example of the owner and general manager being the same person, creating a very unique set of circumstances. You were not the owner at any point while you were doing that. And so it does all play out kind of differently. All right, Mike, I need you to explain this to me. I remind anyone who doesn't know, Mike Tannenbaum was the general manager of two different NFL teams. And I've used this analogy while you were away. I used it a couple of times last week. I'm very bad at art, right? If you asked me to draw you a picture of an animal right now, and I did, you would never know what animal I was trying to draw. Okay. But, but when I was a kid, even I could color within the numbers, right? They would say, where you see a number one, color it blue. Where you see a number you know, two, color it red. This is coloring within the numbers. All the receivers are getting deals. His draft class, he was in the same draft class as Justin Jefferson. He's been exactly as productive as any of them. Like, the, it is coloring within the numbers. Why is it taking this long? I don't know. Take a step further. It's costing them tens of millions of dollars. If they had done it in February, we all knew where the receiver market was going to yeah. go. Start with Devontae Smith, Amara St. Brown, on and on and on, all the way up. Tyreek Hill just got done. We know where Justin Jefferson is. It's at least seven or eight million dollars a year, Green. So not only is it paint by the numbers, but on a defending them because I'm not. I, I think they probably should have done it last year, and they would have saved a great deal of money. It would have. The way they operate, they're looking at it. We want to get CD stuff. We have to structure the deal a certain way. I don't think it's about how much they're going to pay him. I think everybody sort of understands where that ends up landing. I think it's about how it how it plays words, how, how, it, how it's structured, the length of the deal, when when he gets the money, all that kind of stuff. Same stuff we were talking about with Dak Prescott. In other words, nobody knows what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys, and it makes no sense whatsoever. The only thing that, that you can reliably understand is the Joneses are cheap. They're content with being, you know, a good team, but really aren't doing what it takes to really become a great team again. Say what? That's all they look, even my wife said that's all they need is good enough because guess what? We keep spending our money with them. So as a cowboy fan, just like I started out with, you know, there's a lot of fans and, and talking to people. There's a lot of fans out here who are disappointed 
with what the Cowboys are doing. And um, I can't say that I'm not one of them, um, but I'm too old to find a new team. Maybe some of you younger people, save yourselves. Save yourselves while you still can, while you're young enough to start over. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, I'll see you guys soon. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. Versatile. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> They have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh.